So my name is Fang Liu. Um, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Applied and Computational Mathematics and Statistics at University of Notre Dame. Um, I'm also the director of graduate studies in the department. So I'm not sure how many students in this room, but if you are interested in applying to our program, I would be happy to talk to you after uh, the talk or during the break. Okay. Um, so today uh, I'll talk about noise injection regularization in large models with application to neural network and graphical models. And uh, this is a joint work with uh, uh, one of my uh, graduate students, uh, Inan Li, uh, his, his uh, third year PhD student uh, in ACMS. Okay. Um, so given the diversity and, and of, of the audience, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm a statistician by training, so I'm not sure how many statisticians in this room, but I'll try to uh, just summarize our work at the high, kind of high level, uh, without going into the technical details. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can leave the room uh, with some uh, like useful stuff. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, so, my my talk uh, will be uh, will be uh, broken into two parts. Okay. So, uh, first, I will kind of give a uh, overview on what is noise injection regularization technique. And uh, I'll talk about two of our recent works. One is, uh, part one is called a wide out, uh, which is a noise injection technique uh, we developed to regularize overfading uh, in neural networks. Okay. And the second part is called Panda. Okay. So that's another noise injection technique that we developed uh, to regularize kind of overfading in uh, undirected graph models. Okay. So uh, the first approach wide out, sorry, not familiar with this. So, uh, so this is why it's called wide out because Gaussian, the Gaussian noise we inject, inject into, uh, into the model uh, is wide noise, right? So out basically is a naming convention that we followed uh, with like the, the, the regularization technique people use in neural networks such as drop out, max out, shake out and a lot of out, right? So that's why our uh, technique calls wide out. And second, second one, a panda, basically it's the acronym of the, of the method that we develop. Uh, so, but with, with a switch between A and P, so we can uh, have a really kind of nice and funny uh, acronym to remember. Okay, so that's panda. Uh, so I'll try to finish, like give you a high level overview on each of the technique within uh, 30 minutes. Okay. Um, so if, I, if you're interested in learning more and knowing more about the technical details in the two methodology, uh, you are more than welcome to read our papers. All the papers are currently under review uh, in, in journals, but they're all available on the archive. Okay, so feel free to download and, and read the papers. Uh, all right, so, uh, so what is noise injection technique? Uh, so it's, it, noise injection technique inject noise to observe data so the learned signals from the noise perturbed data will be less prone to overfading. Uh, if it's less prone to overfading, uh, the model that trained will, will have better generalization ability okay, to be uh, used to do prediction or classification uh, with new data. Okay? So that's noise injection regularization technique. Uh, noise injection uh, regularization technique often used in regularized neural networks. Uh, actually, it's now new. Uh, the noise injection uh, regularization technique is now new. The th there, had, there were theories and application appear in early 1990s. Okay? And a uh, uh, lot of papers written around that time. Uh, but because that time neural network was not popular uh, because of a lot of restrictions, like less data, less computational power. But since 2016, uh, when deep learning kind of researched, uh, and the noise injection regularization technique kind of uh, get more popularity okay, since in the last uh, 10 years or so. Um, besides regularized neural networks, uh, noise injection technique can also be well, also used in other settings as well. Uh, I'll give you two examples. Uh, the first one is the linear discriminant analysis. Um, so you have like a rectangular data set n times p where n is the number of data points and p is the number of features. And, uh, and you could add redundant features, like just attached to the original data set, 
and that kind of yield results as L2 regularized, uh, regularization, okay? So it, it actually gives you similar effect as L2. Um, that paper appeared in 1990, 1990 and besides uh, linear discriminant analysis and neural network uh, reach regularization, uh, I believe some of you probably are very familiar with, uh, has been using linear regression, okay? Uh, so you can directly add a penalty term, which is L2 penalty, onto the loss function, or you could do this in a noise injection uh, manner, right? So you could append a noise uh, data, data matrix onto the original data set and train the model on the noise augmented data set. Uh, the trained model actually have a similar property with the uh, L2 regularization uh, that you use, you, you add a penalty term directly onto the loss function, okay? Uh, so, so those are some of the examples uh, where noise injection technique actually used in uh, tra using model training. So I'll, I'll uh, jump into the first part. Uh, so uh, noise injection technique in neural network, uh, I, there are some talks about deep learning. I'm pretty sure that uh, many of you kind of know about this. This is a very simple kind of neural network structure, uh, it's a feed-forward, fully, uh, fully connected neural network. You have, like, sorry. Okay, you have the uh, input nodes, output nodes, and a bunch of hidden layers. And each of the nodes are being connected with edges, right? So those, each edge is called a weight. And in fully connected neural networks, all the edges are unknown, right? So there, if you end up have a really big neural network, there's just millions and millions like uh, parameters that you have to train with limited data set. Uh, so with this, uh, so this is a neural network, right? So there's many other types of neural networks as well. And neural network has been very successful in uh, image classification, speech recognition, playing board and video games. Um, so uh, our second application of, neural, uh, of noise injection technique is the undirected graph models. Uh, for example, gene regularization, uh, gene regularity network, a protein-protein interaction network, right? So you have, uh, like for example, each of the nodes could represent a gene of, of different protein, and you would like to know their interaction patterns, right? Uh, so uh, you could have a graph model where the edges between two nodes are directed, like you could have arrows goes from five to six uh, and goes from six to five, but the setting that we deal with are undirected, so the edges have no direction, okay? Uh, so the nodes are observed data, uh, so could follow Gaussian distribution, Poisson distribution, uh, and uh, Bernoulli distribution, and the edges are the, part, are the unknown parameters so what we have to, uh, to, we have to estimate, right? So if you, if the estimated edge is equal to zero, that means like the two nodes are conditionally independent given all the other nodes in the graph. If two nodes are connected, that means that two nodes are still uh, have interaction or dependent on each other, even you have all the other nodes in the, in the graph model, okay? So we try to apply, and again, similar as neural networks, and uh, for example, if you have P nodes, the number of possible edges is P times P minus one divided by two. And there's, there could be a lot, if the, neural network, if the graph model is huge, a lot of nodes, and you could end up have a lot of parameter to estimate. So this is also kind of could be uh, subsetting to, uh, could be subject to overfitting problem, okay? So, so in summary, in both of the neural network and graphical models, the problem with those two cases, especially in the case where you don't have a lot of data, is overfitting, okay? So what that means is that the model you train on this data set, uh, fits very well on the testing data set, on the data that you are working, but gonna fail when you generalize the train model to new data set, right? So it can only work on the data set you train, but not uh, on, uh, on other uh, uh, new data, right? So we try to mitigate overfitting. Uh, so by using a noise injection recognition technique, okay? Uh, so we develop a wide and doubt uh, and panel techniques and uh, for neural network and direct and, and uh, undirected graph models. Okay, um, so uh, so what is wide out? Um, wide out is efficient. Fa it's it's a family of noise injection regularization technique rather than just one single technique. Uh, it used to regularize our fading neural networks. Uh, we show theoretically that wide out. Uh, uh, is associated with objective function or the loss function uh, in generalizing your models with a penalty term 
that connection has connection with a wide range of panel, uh, penalization in regression such as L2 penalization, L1 penalization, L1 plus L2, which is called elastic net penalization, and like uh, the generalized lasso, which refer to the uh, the group lasso in our case, and the scared penal penalty uh, in, in in this case. Uh, it can also, uh, YDAO can also be viewed as a robust learning neural network models in the presence of small perturbation in the input nodes, right? So even you add like ex external perturbation in the input nodes, uh, it has the, the, the predicted uh, outcome from, from, the, from the given perturbed input nodes kind of remain roughly the same, right? So less prone to, uh, to the perturbation in the input nodes. Uh, we also uh, establish theoretically that uh, with the noise perturbed loss function, uh, we can still get consistent parameter estimate under mild regularity uh, assumptions. Uh, computationally, uh, the noise injection technique can be incorporated into the back propagation algorithm, which is the algorithm underlying the uh, neural network uh, very easily. Uh, compared to other noise injection regularization technique, uh, which is like the dropout, including dropout shakeout, which are the Bernoulli uh, noise injection regression technique, uh, when the sample size is small, uh, our wide out, which is a Gaussian noise injection technique, actually out outperformed those, uh, those uh, Bernoulli noise injection techniques. Okay? Uh, so besides uh, the supervised learning, uh, neural network framework, uh, the no wide out can also be applied to unsupervised learning, such as a restricted Boltzmann machine and the auto encoder. Um, so uh, some, some notations here. So. Um, all right, so X, uh, J, uh, L stands for, the, stands for layer, layer L in a neural network. X are, refers to either the input nodes or the hidden nodes. And those are, these are either observed if, if it's an input node or hidden, uh, or observed if it's a hidden node. And we're gonna add Gaussian noise onto uh, either the input nodes or the hidden nodes, right? So, and the noise, uh, is drawn a sample from a Gaussian distribution with mean equal to zero, and this is a variance of the Gaussian noise. This is not like coming from nowhere. This is actually designed, the, uh, the, the variance is designed this way to give us the regularization, regularization effect that we wanted, okay? So W is the weights, uh, is a weight that connect node J with node I uh, into adjacent layers, right? So this sigma square and the gamma and lambda are the tuning parameters, okay? So you could set those tuning parameters at different values to give you different regularization effect, okay? So this is additive, and after you uh, inject noise onto either the hidden nodes or the, uh, on the input nodes, you have the noise perturbed nodes, and you're gonna train the neural network on the noise perturbed nodes, okay? And the model being trained on the noise perturbed nodes actually are more robust, um, actually, uh, to, uh, to uh, perturbation, small perturbation in the input nodes, and they have the inherent regularization uh, kind of properties. Uh, besides the additive noise injection, you could also do this in a multiplicative way. Okay, you could multiply a noise that sample from a noise uh, from a Gaussian distribution, but with because you are multiply uh, a noise term, right? So you're gonna change that mean from zero to one. Otherwise, everything gonna result like around uh, zero, right? So you change that from zero to one and you end up have multiplicative noise injection as well. But multiplicative no noise injection can be written, rewritten as uh, additive noise injection, right? So we can focus just on additive noise injection and study the property and that can be automatically uh, extended to the multiple noise injection uh, setting, okay? Um, and so why, so that's basically the technical, right? So why does it work as a regularization, uh, overfitting, uh, uh, overfitting mitigation technique? Uh, so we answer this question from two aspects. Uh, so we show that uh, the, the, if we train the data on the noise injected uh, 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 data, and the, we basically minimize the loss function, uh, with a closed form reg regularization technique, right? You have a loss function and you have a penalty term and you try to minimize the sum of both. And that's, the, we established that in the generalized linear model setting, uh, 
And we also establish uh, whiteout as an overfitting mitigation technique uh, by establishing that it helps to decrease the sensitivity of the learned neural network to small perturbation in the input data set. Okay, so that's the kind of the, we uh, set up the rationale for, uh, for whiteout uh, as an overfitting mitigation technique. Uh, so kind of just uh, briefly, um, so what, what kind of, uh, regularization, tech, regularization effect uh, whiteout will give you, okay, depends, as I mentioned, there are three tuning parameters, sigma, gamma, and lambda. By setting those tuning parameters at different values, you end up have different regularization effect, right? So if I set lambda equal to zero, you have the so-called bridge regularization effect, which is L, L uh, to minus gamma, okay, norm, right? So, and this is the uh, distribution where you're gonna draw the noise from and then add it onto uh, the nodes in the neural network. And you could set lambda equal to zero, gamma equal to one, so you end up have the L1 regularization, which known as also known as a lasso, and so on and so forth, right? So besides uh, those regularization effects, we can also extend the wide out to give us to give us others uh, regularization effects such as adaptive lasso and uh, group lasso uh, regularization. Um, so this is the uh, theorem that we have in the paper. Basically, what this theorem says is that uh, with respect to, to uh, with expectation to the distribution of the injected noise, okay, and we are basically minimize the loss function on the original data set plus the sensitivity uh, of the learned model, okay, uh, which is the parameter of W and B, B is weights and B, uh, W is weights, B and bias, right? So you would like to, not just to minimize the loss function, and you would like to minimize the sensitivity of the learned model uh, to small perturbation uh, uh, to the input nodes as well, right? So uh, basically, wide out allows you to kind of simultaneously minimize it both uh, rather than just for focusing on the first one, okay? So if you just focus on the first one, uh, you could not take into account the sensitivity of the learned model to small perturbations. Um, and uh, besides uh, establishing wide out as mitig mitigation technique and the statistician like to examine the symptotic properties, <coughs> like when n the sample size, uh, the training data set goes to infinity, uh, like what kind of loss function you end up with and what's the properties of the estimated parameters. Uh, so we have a bunch of like a chain of theorems and, and, uh, and the lemmas in the paper. Basically what it says that, uh, so the ELF is the ideal loss function where you have the sample size goes to infinity, right? So this would never happen. That's why this is the ideal situ situation. You would like to minimize the ideal loss function, you'll get the parameter estimate uh, on the neural uh, from the neural network, but what we have, we don't have that, but what we have is ELF, which is the empirical loss function, and we would like to get the parameter estimate by minimizing empirical loss function, but if you minimize this directly, you are prone to overfitting. So that's why we add noise to the empirical loss function, we have the perturbed empirical loss function, and we're gonna minimize that, and we get the parameter estimate uh, under some regulatory condition, we establish that the parameter estimate by minimizing the perturbed loss function are consistent with the, uh, with the uh, parameters that minimize ideal loss function. Okay, so as the sample size goes to infinity, K refers to the epochs, right? So of the uh, back propagation algorithms, right? So if you kind of let the epochs go to infinity, uh, you kind of basically, basically taking uh, expectation with regard to the distribution of noise, right? So and uh, so you, if you like at, let both go to infinity, you have the uh, consistency of the parameter estimate from here to there, okay? So uh, besides the asymptotic property, we also look at the kind of finite uh, sample size scenario, right? So this is a complicated, uh, uh, formula, basically you focus on this K, K is the number of epochs, right? So this is the, uh, uh, the loss function we are trying to minimize, right? So perturbed loss function, this is its expectation. Uh, basically this t theorem tells you that uh, the wide out uh, technique is trainable, right? So if you add wide out noise to the neural network, you end up have a parameter estimate, right? So because the uh, it's gonna the the empirical loss function gonna approach its expectation uh, with basic property equal to one, right? So when k goes to infinity, okay. Uh, so that's what 
that's what uh, this uh, tail bound uh, tells you. Okay. Uh, so we also run a few simulation studies, like basically their experiment to exam to com to compare the white out uh, noise to white out the technique to other uh, uh, techniques. Uh, and so I'm going to show you some of the results here. This is a prediction accuracy, and uh, this is no regularization. Basically, you just train the neural network as is without any regularization technique. And the dropout is the Bernoulli uh, noise injection. Shakeout is improved version of dropout, where uh, the Bernoulli is not like a zero one. It's actually adaptive, depends on the model parameters. And we also have those three wide out uh, techniques in there. And the, the, the bold numbers are the technique that give you the highest uh, uh, prediction accuracy, right? So all these appear under white out. And the shaded are the runner ups, right? So all those kind of appear in white out, beats the beating uh, dropout and the shakeout uh, in terms of prediction accuracy. Uh, uh, besides the simulation study, we also test uh, wide out in a, uh, in a few real life studies, and uh, that includes the kind of the classical data set like MNIST, the, the handwritten 0 to 9 uh, digit data set, and the CEFA, which is an image data set uh, with 10 different uh, categories, right? Dog and airplane and uh, cats like that. Uh, we also apply wide out to two smaller data sets, right? So MNIST and CEFA, they are huge, right? So they are like uh, 60,000 uh, uh, like training data set. And the LSVT, the first and second experiment, has smaller data set. So that's, uh, and uh, we could compare white out with shake out, drop out, and uh, turn out, I'm going to show you just the results from one experiment. And it turned out our white out technique uh, performed the best, right? So those are the uh, prediction accuracy of the outcomes. Without regularization, you have like only 74. And uh, with all the kind of uh, noise injection technique regularization, the, the, uh, the prediction accuracy increased a lot. And the wide out uh, happens to uh, perform uh, the best among uh, all the three regularization techniques under different uh, tuning parameter uh, settings, OK? Um, so, uh, all right, let me see. I think I have just a few minutes. Uh, I'm gonna go through very quickly about like how uh, noise injection technique can be used in constructing and directed graph models. Uh, so this is the idea, right? So if you try to kind of uh, estimate the dependency structures among, among different nodes, right? So this is observed uh, data set, right? So, uh, this is the J node, node J, and you have a bunch of other nodes. This is the kind of uh, actually, uh, uh, let's say the number of nodes is P, and this is like n times P minus one vector in there. This is observed data set. But rather than training the new uh, training the graphical model on this observed data set, we're going to append uh, a noise a noisy data matrix onto the observed data sets, right? So. And uh, these noise uh, values are designed uh, to give us the, uh, the regularization technique, uh, the regularization effect that we wanted on, uh, the, on the model, right? So, uh, and those star values depends on what the node uh, value are. So if the nodes are Gaussian, so those star value will be zeros. Uh, if X is Bernoulli, we're going to have 50% of zeros and 50% of one. If the X nodes are Poisson distributed, all those uh, uh, like inject noise are one, right? So depending on uh, the nodes kind of uh, type, we're going to have different uh, noise being injected uh, into the into a data set. So that's for training a single graph. And in like biological and real life applications, sometimes you want to compare different graphs to see like the to see wh whether the connection patterns are the same or not. Uh, you have different multiple graphs and the, uh, Panda can also be used in training multiple graphs at the same time, uh, besides promoting like a sparsity connection patterns within each of the graph, it also promotes the similarity uh, in the st structure similarity across graph, right? So you don't expect the graph to differ a lot. Most of the patterns are going to remain the same. Uh, you change uh, like conditions, maybe just a few uh, edges are going uh, to change, right? So you could append. Uh, a noise data set onto the observed data set and the train uh, the graph models on the noise uh, augment, augmented data, uh, data, uh, data set and you end up have a regularization uh, on the parameter estimates, okay? Uh, so actually, I think my time is up. I don't have time to go through the rest of the 
uh, of the talk. But if you're interested in learn, learning more about this, I would be happy to talk offline. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's for different purposes, right? So this is really just for, I think, for regularized overfading. But the, I, I think that you also, ref, that one is called to ref, refer to as data augmentation, right? So like you take a picture like either from this angle or different angle, is that what you were referring no, to? No, oh, okay. No, 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 no. I, this would be a form of regularization as well. Oh, okay. Uh, right? Because you're trying to account for more variance in the environment. So I wonder uh. if you changed up the noise model beyond just white noise or maybe uh, some more complicated of different noise models, does that make the model generalize even further? Uh, we haven't studied yet that yet. I think everything has to be driven by theory, right? So we, with the Gaussian noise model, uh, Gaussian noise injection, we could establish the corresponding regularization effect, whether that gave you L1, which is kind of as similar as the sparsity regularization, or L2, which kind of shrink all the weight parameters towards zero. So we could make a connection between the type of noise you added versus the theoretical uh, like a regularization effect, but with like the more fancy, the fusion of a different uh, noise, I think you have to make that connection. If you could make that connection, I think it, it should be fine. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Any other questions? Yeah. 